Savannah River site was born of an exciting yet perilous time. The nation was on the cusp of the atomic age and the cutting edge of an emergent technology. Yet the specter of the Cold War loomed large and was the motivating force behind the construction of what was then known as the Savannah River Project. The defense strategy of the nation shifted when the Soviet Union demonstrated its ability to detonate an atomic bomb in 1949. The creation and expansion of nuclear facilities to support the development of our nuclear arsenal became the priority. By October 1950, the DuPont Company was chosen as the first contractor to manage the construction and operation of the new production facility near Aiken, South Carolina. Almost overnight, droves of construction workers, engineers and scientists from every state in the Union descended upon the central Savannah River area to live, raise families, and begin work on an industrial and engineering project that rivaled the building of the Panama Canal. In three short years, much of the Savannah River plant went from conceptual design to a functioning nuclear materials production facility. Ultimately, five production reactors, two separations facilities, heavy water extraction, waste management, laboratories, and other support facilities were realized within its 310 square miles. With little doubt, history proves that the Savannah River site contributed to winning the Cold War. By the time the Berlin Wall came down and tensions between the former Soviet Union and the United States thawed, the men and women of SRS had worked safely and diligently for 35 years, meeting and perfecting the needs of our nation's defense and making the world safer. Just shy of 200,000 acres, the Savannah River site was constructed on what was once farmland in western South Carolina, along the banks of the Savannah River. Today, the vast forests of SRS comprise a timber and forestry research center managed by the United States Forest Service. In 1972, it was designated as the first National Environmental Research Park and is now the home to rare and endangered species. SRS remains a primary component of the United States Department of Energy complex. It ranks near the top of safest industrial facilities worldwide. The Savannah River site processes nuclear material in support of our national defense. Tritium at the Savannah River site is an enduring mission. It is the nation's only facility for extracting, recycling, purifying and reloading this hydrogen isotope a key component of modern nuclear weapons. Through a commitment to continued excellence, rigorous discipline and consistency of performance, Savannah River Tritium Enterprise is able to meet five assigned missions that are crucial to national security. Tritium supply, nuclear stockpile maintenance, nuclear stockpile evaluation, helium-3 recovery, research and development. Nuclear materials management encompasses four distinct areas and processes. K area complex, spent fuel operations, H canyon, HB line, each contributing to nuclear non-proliferation and environmental cleanup. If any place could be called the Fort Knox of plutonium, it would be K area. The K area complex is the largest category one storage facility in the Department of Energy complex for the safe and secure handling, storage and surveillance of excess plutonium and other special nuclear materials. In a former life, the 105K building was the home of K reactor, the last operating production reactor to produce nuclear materials for the United States during the Cold War era. Because of its robust construction, security infrastructure, and rigorous seismic and structural upgrades, 105K was chosen by DOE to be its premier plutonium storage facility. Another arm of nuclear material management at SRS is the spent fuel operations. Spent fuel is nuclear fuel that has been irradiated in a nuclear reactor. 
L reactor, the former production reactor, now serves as a basin for the storage of used nuclear fuel consolidated from the production years at the Savannah River site and the DOE complex, as well as foreign and domestic research reactors. L Basin holds approximately 3.4 million gallons of water with a pool depth of 17 to 50 feet. The basin water acts as shielding to protect the workers from still present radiation. Today, H Canyon stands as the only large-scale, shielded radiochemical facility in the United States and is currently participating in a highly enriched uranium blend-down campaign that converts the HEU, or highly enriched uranium extracted from used or spent nuclear fuel received from L area, to low enriched uranium. This LEU is no longer weapons usable and is used to make fuel for use in the Tennessee Valley Authority power reactors to generate electricity. To date, enough LEU has been provided to TVA to power the equivalent of all the homes in South Carolina for eight and a half years. Finally, HB Line makes plutonium oxide, a non-weapons usable form of plutonium for use ultimately in fuel for commercial nuclear power reactors. The site has a mission of dispositioning liquid nuclear waste and operationally closing the waste tanks. This has profound significance to the well-being of the community, the nation, and the world. The radioactive waste from SRS is contained in the F and H area tank farms. Much of this waste resulted from the radiochemical processing that occurred in F and H Canyon during the Cold War and is known as legacy waste. Approximately 36 million gallons of this radioactive byproduct is held in 43 large underground tanks that were constructed between 1951 and 1981. For over 20 years, the high-level radioactive waste in the tanks has been successfully processed into manageable glass logs at the Defense Waste Processing Facility, or DWPF. The remaining decontaminated salt waste solution is transferred to the saltstone production facility. There, it is mixed with a dry cement-like material that forms a grout and is safely and permanently stored at SRS in engineered storage units. The new Salt Waste Processing Facility, or SWPF, will provide an improved processing of highly radioactive salt solution currently stored in the underground tanks. Ultimately, each tank will be emptied and cleaned, then permanently closed, rendering it unusable. Savannah River National Laboratory is a multi-program national laboratory that puts science to work providing practical, cost-effective solutions for our nation's environmental cleanup, nuclear security, and clean energy challenges. The lab provides the science and technology support for SRS operations as well as non-SRS customers, including Department of Energy, National Nuclear Security Administration, and other DOE sites and federal agencies such as the Department of Homeland Security and the Federal Bureau of Investigation. SRS provides unparalleled community service and economic impact to the region through corporate support of nonprofit agencies, schools and universities, as well as opportunities for businesses and economic development. SRS employees have a long tradition of generously giving back to their community by volunteering in a wide range of nonprofit organizations, local service projects, and educational outreach programs. The states of South Carolina and Georgia realize a $2.6 billion economic impact annually. The more things change, the more things stay the same. After well over a half century of service to the country, we find ourselves still in a perilous world, at the same time faced with the hope of new technologies the unique skills of its people and one-of-a-kind facilities allows the SRS to be a key player in developing innovative approaches to nuclear materials challenges, 
supplying tritium for our country's nuclear weapons deterrent, providing unparalleled environmental stewardship, and securing nuclear materials to prevent unwanted proliferation. The Savannah River Site, helping to make the world safer.